Welcome back, everyone. Now that we've covered the basics of object-oriented programming, OOP, and how to create and use objects, it's time to make our programs interactive by getting user input. Today, we'll learn how to use the scanner class and the JOption pane class to receive input from the user. So let's begin with the scanner class. The scanner class is part of the java.util package and is used to get input from various input sources, including the keyboard. Creating a scanner object, um, you, to use the scanner class, you need to create an instance or an object of the class using a new keyword. This is an example of OOP where we instantiate an object and use its methods to perform tasks. So I have here for you an example. Or as you can see, we are importing the scanner class as I said, it's in the java.util package. So java.util.scanner, import java.util.scanner. We're creating a class, user input example. Um, we have our main method. We're creating a scanner object to read input from the keyboard. To do this, we have our scanner because that's the class. Our variable uh, instance in this case is gonna be an input. It equals the new keyword scanner. So the constructor that's gonna create the instance of this class. Uh, and the input needed to do so, system not in. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> similar system dot out, where we output to the console system not in, and we're getting things from the keyboard. So we're going to use this to prompt the user, system not out dot print, enter your name, so that way the user knows to enter your name, and then we'll read that string input, um, string name equals input dot next line. So it's going to read in the next line. Then system not out print, so we'll get another prompt to the user. Uh, enter your age, and then we're going to use uh, it dot next int another method from the scanner class um, that reads an integer input. Whenever you read these things in, uh, something occurs where it goes until it reaches a new line. However, when you anytime you read using dot next line, it goes until it gets that new line character. So when you read something in uh, as an integer or a double, um, it's very, very important that you, the next, very next line is input dot next line, or not input dot next line, but use this uh, scanner object dot next line. Okay. The reason is so that you'll clear the keyboard buffer for the next time someone types something in and then presses enter. Okay. All right. So uh, after we do that, we're just gonna ask an inner favorite number and we're gonna take that in as a double this time, just so you get practice doing the double as well. Um, so double favorite number input dot next double. So notice we had next int for integer, next double for double. Um, and then once again, read the uh, double. We're then we're gonna do a input dot next line so that we clear the keyboard buffer. So now we're going to display the input back to the user so they can see the whole thing. So we'll say hello, the name that we got, your age, or you are, the age that we got, years old, and your favorite number is the double that we got. And then another important piece is once you're done using the scanner, close it because you don't need it any, anymore. Okay. It's just a, uh, not a safety precaution, but it's a good uh, way of doing things, a habit you should get into. So we we import the scanner class from the java.util package. We create a scanner object called input to read the data from the standard input, which is the keyboard. We use methods like next line, next int, and next double to read different data types. The new keyword is used to create an instance of the scanner class, showcasing the instantiation process in OOP.
we use input.next line after the next int and the next double to clear the new line character from the buffer, ensuring that the subsequent next line calls correctly, call works correctly. All right, now using the J options pane class. The J options pane class is part of the uh, JVAX.swing or JavaX.swing package. It provides a graphical, a graphical user interface for user input in messages. It's particularly useful for creating simple dialog boxes. So let's take a look at an example of getting user input with J option pane. So here, we're going to import the JOption pane class. Uh, so import from uh, JavaX or JavaX.swing and JOptionsPane. We're doing a user input example GUI. So I named the class that. <laughs> um, so in our main method, we are going to get user input from a dialog box. So in JOptionsPane, there is a method known as show input dialog that dialog box that allows you to get user input. Um, so it'll say, enter your name, and then there'll be an area for them to type things in. Um, and then that goes somewhere. Guess where it goes? Uh -huh. uh, then we're going to have another one for getting age. Um, and we're going to see, uh, well, we're gonna, that's going to go here. It's a name. Then we're going to use, uh, we're going to use another one to get the age from the user. But the age was an integer. Wouldn't make sense to leave it as a string, right? So we get it as a string or age input. We want to change it to the integer. Well, we do that using another, <clears throat> excuse me. We use that using uh, a, a method from another class, the integer class. Um, this is a static method, a method you can use uh, without an instance of the class being created. But this allows us to parse um, the age input, which is a string, parse it to become an integer. So save the age. We're gonna do the same thing with favorite number, but this time it's gonna be a double. And to uh, do that, Inside of the double class, there is a method known as parse double that, similar to parse integer, allows us to uh, essentially change a string to become a double. Okay, cool. So, um, then we're going to display the input back to the user, but also using a dialog box. Ooh, cool. Um, and so we begin with a null um, as the first parameter, and then we can put in each of the pieces that we need to add in there. Okay. All right. So in this example, we import the JOptions paying class with the import javax.swing.joptionpaying. We use show input dialog to prompt the user for input through the dialog box. Show input dialog. Okay. Um, so we use show input dialog to prompt the user for input through the dialog box and J option pane returns strings. So we need to convert these strings to appropriate data types. So returns to a string, returns to a string, and it returns to a string. This is our array of string, which we need. To convert, <clears throat> we convert the input string to an integer using integer.parseInt. And we convert the input string to a double using double dot parse double. Finally, we use show message dialog to display the user's input back to them.
Ah, so when using both the scanner energy option pane, we are engaging with several key OOP components, classes and objects. We created instances of the scanner and the J option pane classes to use their methods. We call with our methods, we call methods like next line, next int, next double, show input dialog, and show message dialog to perform actions on our objects. And instantiation, using the new keyword to create objects from a class. So as you can see, getting user input in Java involves creating objects from classes and using their methods. This is the essence of OOP in action. By understanding how to work with objects in their methods, you can make your programs interactive and user-friendly. Remember to instantiate your objects and call the appropriate methods to get and display user input. Happy coding. That was a little hot. Still, bon appetit.